We had a lot of discussion uh, about suburban versus downtown. Uh, Vancouver is, um, a dis or, excuse me, Memphis, uh, a distinct model in that um, the vast majority of our season ticket base was out in the suburbs, uh, but there was a, a, a drive to keep the building downtown. The building is located uh, just steps off of Beale Street. Uh, this lower right-hand corner photo, uh, that alley, actually the buildings on the left-hand side of that alley are on Beale Street. So it's right in the heart of the entertainment district in, in downtown Memphis. So, so that's where it was going to be. Um, kudos to John and his team. We finally were able to break ground in uh, June of 2002. A little bit late, but you know, it was LRK. It was LRK. Uh, FedEx Forum, 850,000 uh, square feet. Uh, Vancouver was 475,000 square feet. So um, the pyramid was probably 400 ish. Uh, so buildings in less than 10, 12, 15 years had doubled in size. Um, I think we did it right down there. Um, it's still considered one of the top buildings in the league. Uh, it's one of the newest buildings in the league. There's really only been uh, one other building that's opened up since we opened up uh, in 2004. Um, but uh, it, it certainly turned out, uh, I think, very nice for the community, and it's going to be a definite long-term asset. So got through the construction phase of the project, and not only was I, was I wearing a literal construction hat, um, working with the contractor and the architects and everything, um, at the building, but I also had, in a parallel path, we had to develop uh, our Army Operations Group. And my focus still had been on, on the operations side of the business, and our staff, we had about uh, six or eight folks um, that did operations at the Pyramid. That was gonna grow up to about uh, 45 full-time staff, going to about 450, 500 part-time staff. So, had to hire staff, um, work with our food and beverage provider uh, to make sure they were happy so they can make us money so we can um, make a bit of profit. Uh, worked with our sponsorship and sales group. Um, got to work with FedEx. And um, if it's tough sending a package on FedEx, uh, imagine when they write a $93 million check. Um, they're very particular. Um, you know, back, back to your days with Sprint, uh, you know what they were doing. Um, but uh, it was, uh, you know, FedEx is, is headquartered in Memphis and, and they wanted this to be a, a marquee um, for their brand, for their employees. They've got over 30,000 employees in Memphis. So um, that was really their, their impetus, um, one of their driving, uh, driving reasons to have a, a, a corporate partnership with the Grizzlies and, and to name the building. Um, everything from public safety to, to IT to engineering uh, was able to have my hand in it um, and uh, learn a little bit, probably enough to get me in trouble. But um, was able to really uh, mold and, and direct um, our group to, to open up the building. Uh, we opened up uh, September 4th of 2004, um, Labor Day weekend, and um, had really strong uh, uh, ticket sales that year. Um, second year making the playoffs, um, second year getting swept in the playoffs, but it um, was definitely a great experience. Um, from a personal, excuse me, from a uh, personal perspective, it was uh, a tough time for me um, from 2001 until 2005. Um, I was a big fan of Northwest Airlines. Um, my family stayed in Vancouver uh, for the entire time. Um, we had some uh, relocation challenges with my stepson and he wasn't able to make the move. So my family, my wife and stepson stayed in Vancouver um, until the building was done. Um, became a big fan of uh, Minneapolis St. Paul Airport. Um, half a million miles later, um, was able to get back home for good um, in, uh, after the first season in the building. So uh, got back to the West Coast in 2005 and um, didn't have a job, but I knew I, knew I wanted to get home. Um, so I started up my, uh, my, my firm, Cascade Sports Group. Um, sounds a lot bigger than it is, and uh, it's we've done okay. Um, Canada's all about hockey. We hosted the World Junior Hockey Championship in 2006. I did some operations work for that, some consulting for that. Um, first real big gig after that was the FIFA Under-20 World Cup. Uh, this is the men's Under-20 World Cup, the men's junior World Cup for soccer. Uh, it was in six cities across Canada. Uh, Vancouver was the host of, of one of the western cities. Uh, quite a challenging event when you're going from Victoria on the west coast all the way to Montreal in the east. We had a spread of over uh, 2,500 miles between venues. Um, Big enough challenge when you try to do a soccer tournament in one city, and then we're doing it across the country. 
Um, but we had uh, a solid event. We sold over 1.2 uh, million tickets uh, for the uh, three-week tournament. Um, in FIFA's world, it's the second biggest tournament after Men's World Cup. It's actually bigger than the Women's World Cup. Um, and it was a great event. Uh, was, uh, we, we followed uh, Frank's successful hosting in the Netherlands in 2005, um, and there was a team that went there. Um, but uh, it was a great, great experience. Uh, for me, it was really my first um, uh, in-depth uh, working with a, a, an inter international sport organization. Uh, FIFA has a FIFA way, and that's how you're going to do it. Um, and eventually you're going to come around and you'll agree that you do it the FIFA way. Um, so it was, uh, it was very, uh, it was an exciting time um, to really head up the local operations for, for that event. Uh, most recently, uh, we held the, uh, I was involved uh, with the senior management team for the World Police and Fire Games. Um, kind of, this event kind of fl uh, flies under the radar, but we had uh, over 10,000 athletes and over 20,000 visitors to Vancouver uh, for uh, about 15 days this past summer. Um, over $80 million in economic impact uh, to the province uh, for that event alone. So I um, was involved in that. It was a very unique event, uh, working with a lot of um, police and fire volunteers, huge volunteer component of over 3,500 uh, volunteers for the event. Um, for the city and for the province, it was a bit of a test run for the, um, for the Vancouver Olympics, um, which I was fortunately a spectator for, um, which was a, a nice change. Um, Great event to work on, uh, would never do it again. Um, and as you guys get out in the world, you'll probably all say that one time or the other. Uh, great client to have, don't ever want to see them again. Um, but uh, you know, you learn a lot of uh, the good and the bad um, that you'll take away from all of your experiences. So, um, gets me where I am today. Um, I was talking to my guys uh, that were coming in and we were catching up before we came in. It's like, I'm gonna tell these guys that after 15 years, I'm unemployed, um, but uh, so in some regards, I'm in the same boat as you guys, um, but just looking for a new challenge. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening out uh, in Vancouver on the West Coast. Uh, I'm very fortunate that I can work on both sides of the border, um, so that's a, that's a good thing. Um, it has allowed me to um, you know, become a dual citizen up in Canada, so I've got a lot of flexibility going forward. Um, definitely wouldn't have thought that's where I was going to end up um, after my time here, but, uh, but it's been great. Um, and I want to, uh, to leave with just kind of a few things uh, that, that I've picked up. Um, you know, take these with a grain of salt. Um, maybe you'll, uh, you'll learn something, but um, just uh, what is it all meant to me? Um, start at the bottom. Um, really, for me, this isn't about a job position. Um, for me, I was fortunate in that this is how I've come across some great opportunities. And, and what I mean by start at the bottom is don't look at the top of the standings. You know, the, the, the Red Sox and the Yankees aren't going anywhere. But the New York Islanders, they're struggling. They're at the bottom. They're looking for a new building. Uh, the New Jersey Nets um, had a tough couple seasons, but they've got a great new building um, underway as well. Um, also about ownership. Um, I said earlier in the program that, that I never wanted to work for professional owners. Um, completely changed my mind. Um, it's, it's great to, to learn about and to work with ownership, but ownership does change. And when ownership changes, there's opportunities. Uh, Phoenix Coyotes uh, continue to, to struggle. Uh, they don't know who their owner's gonna be next week, but, but that's happening. Tampa Bay Lightning, new ownership down there. Um, so, so those are some things that, that, in my mind, I try to, to, to keep informed with and, and always look for new opportunities. 